Welcome to Knock Bro Nation. What's up, guys? Hey, guys. Today, we're excited to give you an awesome review that we've been waiting for again. Mm -hmm. Kill or Be Killed. Kill or Be Killed. The Season end 14. of the third arc. And what an end of an arc it is. Yeah, it was amazing. I am... Oh, it's quickly Ugh. becoming like my top series to read yeah and this one is the last of the connecting issues for this arc yep connecting covers for and this and then arc. we start the asylum ones we start the asylum ones yeah <laughs> which we understand why <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's get into it we pick up where we left off the previous issue where uh dylan is actually uh he's he's discovered the russian mobs hotel or the syndicate's hotel it's it's a it, he's actually in a brothel yeah and yeah. so what he says is that he's he's going through these these warehouses and uh you know he's kind of giving his narrative saying he's kind of pushed himself ahead of himself again in a way mm -hmm. but uh he's found the brothels and that's where he's at so he has this three-part plan which we'll be getting into he goes step by step of what the plan is and the first step is to go to these brothels. Yeah, yeah. So he just obviously starts blowing away some Russians at this brothel. Just I mean, annihilating them. And, and again, this was in the very first issue. Yes, we see some images of the from the very first issue, especially the iconic the red mask and mm -hmm. the, the the shot the butt of the shotgun coming down. That is a very iconic picture for this series. Yes, yeah. <laughs> very iconic. Matter of fact, I think I used it in as the background of one of our thumbnails. It's just yeah, it's an awesome image of him swinging that shotgun. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. So um, he he gets into the series in this narrative where. Um, he has, like you said, three plans, and mm -hmm. he's started to enact these plans. This this attack on the on the brothel was one of them. Right. Um, part of the second plan was to uh, basically fool the Russian mob. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, as the Russian mob is clearing out the brothels, um, yeah. you know, he's <clears throat> they're taking out their girls and stuff like that, and vacating the premises and. Uh, it's also making att bringing attention to the cops as well because mm -hmm. the cops are seeing this commotion going on, and uh, they're like, "Okay, we got to get out. We got to contain the scene." So as they're going around trying to look for whoever this is, they go up on the roof and they see a jacket just yeah. easily placed there. So the as the the Russians find a jacket, the Russians <laughs> find the jacket. It has no vodka. No vodka. <laughs> so in the jacket, apologize if any Russians are watching. Yes, this. apologize. We're just being stupid. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in the jacket, they find a piece of paper with addresses of all the other brothels. Yep. And they're like, oh, crap. Whoever this is, is going to hit them all. Yeah, and I think they know at that time who it is. Like, they, right. they've they kind of identified by this time that the vigilante is after them. Yeah. Um, and now it's time to basically uh, stretch themselves out to cover all of their brothel locations. Yeah. So basically different factions of the Russian mob are going to be guarding these now mm -hmm. uh, for fear that he's going to come after those brothels next. Yep. And so we, we get a little segue with Dylan. He's actually back at his apartment apartment kind of getting ready gunned up he's already he's already fled the scene of the brothels he's done his his one and two plans and now he's getting ready for this third so he has to go home and kind of get geared up and yeah. we get an interesting uh interaction between him I love and this, actually. Uh, who's his i forgot his roommate's name now it's been a while jeez it has been a while mark maybe Screw it. He does. He's not. That, he's, he's, he's not that important. So <laughs> I'm actually gonna look. You All keep right. talking. So anyway, as he is. Um, so what happens is that his roommate is asking him, "Hey, look, I know what's going on between you and Kira. I know you guys have started to see each other again, in a sense." And he's like, "Can you just? I have some ground rules I want to talk to you about." You know, first it kind of takes him. Um, I. For, I'm not even gonna go go for his name. <laughs> anyway, first it kind of takes Dylan. It blindsides Dylan. First of all, it does uh, because he and Kira have not had this conversation yet as to what exactly they are. Are they serious? Right. Are they in a relationship? Um, and it and it's apparent, you know, to him now that Kira obviously had enough uh, to call his roommate and say hey look i don't want this to be weird right. but dylan and i are an item we are together and we're dating right and he's his roommate's like yeah it's like kira to just you never know how to read her you never, you never know, know what, what you are with yeah her, you never know what you, you are know. with her and so he's like can you just do one thing and not bring her around here to hang out can you just not do that and we get kind of a narrative with dylan he's I love like this narrative he's just like you know at first i 
I you know I always felt bad for the guy and the, the way I was before I, I would I was always kind of bottling things up inside I was never a strong person yeah, I was never you know like one to speak out yeah he avoided confrontation he avoided confrontation yeah, yeah. so but but in the narrative he says uh, give me a drug dealer or give me some, a rapist and I'll go after them and and kill them in a heartbeat like or that. you know I'll confront them in a heartbeat exactly but give me a normal run of the mill situation and I'm saying this in layman's terms of course it's not exactly how it was written but right. give me a normal situation where your roommate is confronting you about a girl that he used to date that you're now dating and I curl up and avoid the confrontation right. and then he's like not this time not this time so <laughs> what's great is like he's like look Kira and I we've been friends for a very long time yeah. we've known each other for a long time he's like who do you think you are saying yeah, he ask, actually says who do you think you are asking me you know, okay, yes, we're back together. Apparently, we're in this relationship, and you you expect me to be like not have her come around because it's not cool for you. And he's like stepping up to his roommate, and the dude's like, dude, 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 like, yeah, I'm he, sorry. He's man. like, what's what's wrong with you? Uh, what's wrong with you, Dylan? But the thing that here is that Dylan basically says, look. Um, you knew that I liked her. You knew that I yeah. had feelings for her. And, and you, you stepped, in. stepped in and took her. Mm -hmm. um, if anything, you did that on purpose. Right. So he's blaming his roommate now for, for everything that went on between right. Kira and them two. And basically now he says at this point is... I'm going to bring her around whenever I want. Mm -hmm. If she's with me, she's allowed to be here. Right. You know? And one thing that his roommate says is like, he's like, I'm sorry, man. He's like, I thought we were it's friends. Like, Jesus Christ, man. Yeah. He's like, I <laughs> thought we were friends. And Dylan's like, no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes back in his room and then we get back with Dylan and we find out the final piece of his plan. So with the mobsters going out, assuming that the vigilante is going to be hitting all the other brothels, and they're spreading themselves thin. That leaves numero uno, boss man, to be very vulnerable. And that is exactly who Dylan is going after. Yeah, so basically they've stretched themselves so thin that there are only three guards there at the main compound of the head Russian mob. Right. Of the head of the Russian mob. Um, so it allows him to quickly sneak in. And they said, and he found out from when he uh, interrogated that guy Tito, that there's a safe room that he can make it into, which will then lead him into the house and lead him directly into the bedroom yes. of the uh, the mob boss. Kind of like the movie Panic Room. And if you've ever <laughs> seen that with Jodie Foster, she ain't coming out. No, she's not coming out. No. <laughs> so, but anyway, and, and in his narrative too, it's kind of clever too, because he's like, you think that... Um, Sneaking into a, a mob boss's house and killing a mob boss would be easy, would be hard. Mm -hmm. It's actually not. It's just it's like really not killing a normal person. Right. Just spread <laughs> so thin. It's perfectly fine because I'm just able to make my way in. And so he does. He makes it to the mob boss's room, and this yeah. is all oh, the best part of this comic is right at the end. I loved it. So because yeah, I'll say the first part. Yeah, yeah. Um, the mob boss turns. He he's obviously drinking, facing his fireplace, looking at uh, a painting at his fireplace. You know that stoic stance. Right. You know, and behind comes Dylan with a shotgun, um, and the mob boss turns to Dylan and says, "How close did we get?" Right. And he actually uses his name, so he's like, "Oh, hey, Dylan." That's after he says, "How oh, close did we yeah, get?" Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And so he's like, "How close do we get?" And Dylan's like, "Too close." You know, yeah, he says, uh, uh, oh, no, yes, he's, he does say. It's Dylan, right? Right, yeah, it's Dylan, right? Like, yeah. he kind of knows who he is. <laughs> and uh, so that's the thing is, like, he, the mob understands that he got, they got too close, and that's why he's here to do his thing. And he was like, we don't, and Dylan was like, you should have let things go. And the mob boss was like, we don't we do We never that. let things they go. We never let things go. And yeah. Dylan's like, well, too bad. <laughs> Boom. Boom. <laughs> So then as he gets shot, he falls into the fire pit and ignites himself. <laughs> Not really ignites himself. He just goes on fire. He's on fire. He's on fire. The whole house catches on fire. The guard out front's like, oh my God, what's <laughs> happening? <laughs> they have no idea. And Dylan, you know, just casually makes his way back, takes the train back home. And he's just talking about kind of like now he's like, you know, do I give up being a vigilante? Do I well, make myself normal? Get a Kira and I a chance? What, yeah, so know? so he was actually, you know, saying after he had killed the mob boss that he thought that it would be all over. Mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, in his narrative, he was completely wrong. Yeah. And I can understand too, right? Like you killed the mob boss, but here's the deal. The mob boss knew your name. 
Right. He knew exactly who you were. And so did the rest of his mob. So you just took out the boss. And mm-hmm. what he what his thinking was is you cut the head off of the snake right. and everything else will tumble. Right. I don't I just don't think that that's the case. No. So we, we may find out more. Uh, maybe the underboss right. will take over and still continue the, the tirade that they had on Dylan. Yeah. And so as he's talking as well, he's talking about all the people that he killed. And he's like, besides Rex, I don't regret killing any of the rest yeah. of them. Um, and he was like, even though I thought I was killing for a demon, because he now feels that the demon isn't real. Yeah. He believes that it was a hallucination. Yeah. So then, and he's he's believed that for a while. Some because we have not seen the, the Dylan or not Dylan. We haven't seen the demon in quite a while. Yeah. And so Dylan and Kira now are just hanging out, and Kira's kind of going through the paperwork about his brother. At the same time, he's having this narrative, right, about you know maybe right. I should hang this up. Yeah. You know. She's talking, and it's cool because it gives the bubble, and it's completely white because as he she is speaking, he's tuning her out. And so she's talking, and there's nothing there yeah, because he's I, just I loved that. he's like, talking to himself, just chilling back. Like eh. honestly, I thought the fade off of the print. Was I like thought I got a, a problem. I thought I, I, thought I got, got a messed up copy. So did I. <laughs> I thought I got a messed up copy. I love it. Thank you for throwing that in there. So as she's reading, she kind of starts saying, "Look, hey, um, listen to this. Uh, the most serious thing that uh, these patients had were your brother well, went. First of all, he's he he. She reveals to him that her brother, his brother." who he just found out he had, yeah, yeah. Uh, was seeing a psychiatrist. Who was seeing a psychiatrist, Sorry. yes. And a lot of these patients that went to this doctor were seeing, had, de- uh, you know, had de- they were delirious, basically. They were seeing things, having hallucinations. And she was like, <clears throat> what's really interesting is about your brother, who he, his brother actually killed himself, um, was seeing a creature, hearing whispers, and seeing a creature while he was awake and asleep. And she's like, it had a, you know, had horns and a very de- uh, demonic face. And Dylan, wait, he kind of gets out of his thing. He's like, wait, 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 what did you say? And he was like, your brother committed suicide from seeing a demon. Yeah. And as Dylan looks at Kira, you know, basically <laughs> he is in shock and he's looking and he says, what the fuck? And then he looks over at Kira and she says, what? Dylan is something wrong and as she's looking at as he's looking at her her face is the demon's face <laughs> <laughs> yes with a beautiful smile on his yes. face yeah <laughs> so um yeah, yeah the demon is back and apparently this thing has to be real yeah it's well <laughs> well Maybe not. Right? Something something in their family or something is happening to them, maybe it genetically. Happened to his dad. Happened to his dad, brother. happened to his brother. They both committed suicide. Genetically, there's something going on to um, really seeing this demon. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> and, and here's the deal. Like through this through these arcs that we've read so far, this is the third arc. Mm-hmm. Um, through three arcs now, it's progressively getting worse. Yeah. Like it started off with just well, it came it came out to him, right? It did, yeah. Um, but it it laid low for a while, it and did. he and he tamed it, and now it seems to like be coming back with a vengeance. Yeah, and so this is what's getting us pumped for the next arc, to where these next cover issues of showing him, you know, being in an assailant asylum in a padded room, he might be losing his mind after this, and yeah. so can't wait for that. But yeah. very very great way to end an arc at yeah. Brubaker and team. Awesome. Awesome, guys. <laughs> uh, we're quickly becoming one of our favorite series so far. We really yeah. got to wonder what's going to happen. You know, is he going to be committed to an insane, insane asylum? Is this one image of Kira going to make him go nuts? Right. Um, and what happens to him if he does get admitted to the insane asylum? Right. Uh, is the mob still going to be going after him while he's in there? And also, is he going to ever come clean to Kira? Is he ever going to say what he's been doing or if he's going to possibly still try to keep that a secret to protect her you know even though we took the mob people out who were looking for her as well not necessarily but, <clears throat> well they're looking for we assume we look we assume that but i know they're looking for him but yeah. i don't care i'm excited i want the next issue to yeah. hurry up and come on guys let us know what you thought of issue 14 amazing amazing guys please comment below how you feel about the uh, the end of the third arc in the series so far subscribe to the channel if you're new and stay tuned for more killer be killed we'll be back at you on behalf of Josh, I am Jarrell. We are Knockbro Nation. We're, We're out. out.